Hi, everybody. Uh, we're Team 8, and we're Tommy Liu, Polly Dillon, Trisha Schneider, and Matthew Dean. And our team audit project is for the Southwest Airlines Flight 1380. So today we'll be discussing our Team 8's experience with working together to choose and evaluate a high-performing team. My colleagues will discuss in detail the steps taken to design an audit tool, utilize the MAU model to determine the most appropriate team for analysis, the results of the implementation of our tool, and how we functioned as a team to complete all of these tasks. A motley crew of individuals from three different time zones worked together through virtual meetings and conference calls to assess and evaluate the performance of the flight crew on Southwest Flight 1380. We will share with you our successes, failures, and thoughts as we work to be a high-performing team. To start us off, I will hand it over to Tommy to discuss the first phase of this project. Thank you, Tricia. So I'm going to discuss about how we create the audit tool. So when we create an audit tool, our team carefully examined all the class readings and research materials and discuss all aspects of high-performing teams. From this, we create an evaluation metric to assess team performance, focus, focusing on objective, objective measurable results. Through constructive, constructive decision-making conversations, our team conclude that our audit metric needs to be capable of measuring one, how well does the team perform together, and two, what needs to be improved in order to become a high-performing team. The original intent of the audit tool was to measure a team by assessing each team member to show the effectiveness of the team as a whole. This was done by assessing various weights to each question based on what our team thought was the most important audit criteria. Through weekly team meetings and virtual communication via text message our feed and video conference, our team determined an effective high-performing team should score high for its ability to, uh, to turn in all deli deliverables on time, understanding the short and long-term goal, communication, goal inter interdependability, quality of work, clearly defined deli uh, deliverables and scope of work, structure of the team and comfortability with change uh, with challenge and conflicts. So <clears throat> to make the team audit process clear and easy to use, we create our team audit metric based on a multi-attribute utility model, <clears throat> which is an MAU model. We feel this is the best method to evaluate the team performance based on assigning value and its overall score. Each of the member of Team 8 would assess the assigning team's performance individually, and the result will be combining for this discussion by the evaluators. If at any point there's a large variance or discrepancy in the evaluation results, all team members will work together to determine the origin of this discrepancy. If the discrepancy was created by our audit model, we will alter the model to better fit the need of the evaluation. If it was determined to be an error on any individual assessors, the error will be corrected and consensus among the team will be established. The ultimate goal for this team audit metric is to create an accurate team of evaluation, provide feedback for improvement, and reduce bias during the evaluation process. Next, I'll hand over to Polly to discuss how we choose the team. Choosing the team. To encourage participation, communication, and diversity of thought, all team members were assigned to research and bring one personal choice of a team to the meeting. After a week of individual deliberation, our team participated in a video conference call in which we first built the MAU model. Each team member came up with a list of questions over our video conference call and through collaboration, were able to condense this to six well-written questions. For these six questions, we ranked them from our understanding of what we deemed most impactful to least. After the MAU model's basis for questions and points were completed, each team member had one minute to go over their selection of the team for the group project. One important aspect that we failed to consider as a team while making the MAU model was the length of time to make a model and the effects of fatigue stemming from virtual communications. Prior to making the MAU model, the team had recorded its weekly team theme project, which took a little longer than anticipated. After the presentation was completed, the team went straight into working on the MAU model. This was also after a work day in which two of the four team members were traveling due to work. Needless to say, the team was fatigued, but drove on forward in hopes of completing the project in one sitting. <laughs> the challenge for many virtual teams is the ability to consistently meet and communicate as a team as a whole. 
Team eight has two members of the group on the East Coast, one in the Midwest and another on the West Coast. This created the urgency to complete the project while all other group members were present. When teams are in close physical proximity, breaks are easier to administer versus virtual. As the team continued to work and assess, the five teams that were placed in the MAU model, scores were being provided on a rapid basis. Team member Tommy displayed great leadership in the moment and requested that the team stop for a minute and research all teams that were put in contention and then come back with our findings. Tommy inadvertently had brought up the important aspect of high performing teams and their ability to share diverse ideas, thus mitigating groupthink within the team. We agreed and decided to complete the MAU individually. What this displayed was that as a team, we trust in each other's abilities to research and be fair in our assessments. This also allowed us to be autonomous, allowing everyone's voice to be heard through the process of voting and ensuring diversity of thought in the selection of a team. A few team members mentioned that the additional time to gather information ended up changing their decision on which team was selected. Had we as a team not stopped and continued our selection could have very well been different. Overall, the MAU process greatly assisted in helping quantify qualitative data, but also providing voices to all team members in their assessment of all options. Matt will now speak about the implementation and results. Thanks, Polly. Uh, as all teams did, we created our initial audit tool during module two of this course. Our intent was to understand what each team, team member thought qualified any individual team as a high performing team. Once we understood the priorities of each team member's criteria, we then had an open discussion where each team member discussed their criteria and why it was important to them. Our criteria was weighted by, by team member accountability or the team member's ability to turn in deliverables on time with the highest weighting. From there, we identified communication as well as the team member's understanding of short and long-term goals as the next most important. After that, the weighting for the remaining five criteria leveled out and became even. The remaining criteria accounts for team member cooperation, quality of work, defined scope, structure, and constructive dialogue. The problem that we ran into is the philosophy behind our audit tool. After receiving feedback on our original tool earlier in this course, we realized that the audit tool addressed each member of the team instead of addressing the team as a whole. This was an obvious flaw that original, uh, the original uh, had taken us, had us taking the sum of all parts of the team instead of taking a holistic view. Taking that into account, we adjusted our audit tool to look at one team as a whole, though we did not change the criteria that the team originally deemed, our team originally deemed as high performing criteria. From there, each member of the team contributed sources for research on Southwest Flight 1380, and we all completed the audit tool. As for the results, we were happy to note that our initial assumptions did align with the results from the audit tool. It is important to note that our initial assumptions were purely based on headlines from various newspaper articles that praised the head pilot, Tammy Jo Schultz. However, the audit tool did help, uh, did help provide perspective from each team member as to why they scored each section a certain way, which normally could lead to confusion. At the end of the day, we scored the Southwest flight uh, at 94% out of 100, which for our audit tool did place it in a high performing tier uh, of teams. Uh, though this score is based on all the criteria from the tool, it can be do boiled down to a few uh, key points, which are generally uh, communication, which was seen as calm, cool, and collected uh, between the crew members and the pilots, and the pilots to the ground crew, uh, particularly during such an intense and chaotic situation, and then the experience of the crew. And yes, the leadership from the head pilot, as we've noted already, uh, with clearly defined roles and responsibilities. Uh, and the crew who understood their jobs, uh, which played a major role. And finally, the preparation was seen in the pre-flight uh, preparation meeting with the crew and pilots, which is a standard meeting for all flights, but again, leadership of the head pilot elevated its importance and relevance. It is clear that the audit tool helped provide clarity for our team, even in what may seem to be a clear-cut case of a high-performing team. I'll now pass it on to Trisha to wrap it up. Thanks, Matt. So performing this team audit really helped to clarify the important aspects of a team for all members of Team 8, both in evaluating an external team and in, as a team ourselves. Defining the key criteria, establishing guidelines for that criteria, and implementing an audit tool helped our team gain insight on what it takes to define high-performing teams and achieve, and achieve such a status. The selection of Southwest Flight 1380 challenged Team 8 to audit a team that was only together for a short period of time and under extreme conditions, which some might not typically view as a team. Additionally, finding that our assumptions match that of the audit tool reassured us of our basic understanding of effective teams, much less high-performing teams. After taking part in this process, our collective view on conducting this team audit was a success, and in particular highlighted the importance of team communication, experience, and preparation. 
From an internal team audit perspective, many elements of this project force us to think about how we were functioning as a team and leveraging our individual strengths to create the required deliverables. We work through the phases of forming, storming, norming, and performing to determine how our virtual team would be able to perform in the highest capacity. Through this process, we gain each other's trust, shared the roles of the team leader, and worked together in a cordial and respectful manner. We are proud of the work we've been able to accomplish and would consider ourselves a successful team. Thank you everyone for your attention.